So it goes. Yeah. It yeah. is what it is. It is what it is. Um. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into more of the more of the movies. I'm. I, this hasn't been an exciting week for me. It's been a. Uh, it's been a work week. Yeah. I have deadlines. It's been an insane I'm week. Pretty stressed out about it for me. Yeah. It's just been hot garbage, is what it's been. Uh oh. Yeah. We've been buying cars, and I've been interviewing for other jobs. Yeah. And it's been a by the time this goes up, I'm sure it will already have happened. I'm quitting my job. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, heard about another another job um, in the car finance sort of sector, and so mm-hmm. I applied for that, and it looks like I am getting it. I'm just waiting on an offer letter, and once That's I have so that, I'm going to quit. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will be back to a 9 to 5 schedule, 40 Yay. hours a week, having weekends off, which means that this LP will be a lot more smooth. Yay! Because I've had basically very little time to actually, you know, do the Yay. part I need to do, so... You can have a life again. I will have a life again. <laughs> what a what a concept. I won't be eating, like, fast food all the time because what? it's, like, my only option at my job. I won't be working 60 hours a week. It's going to be quite the, quite the thing. That's wild. Even. Yeah, but so we took advantage of the fact that um, I have all these discounts and stuff on cars and bought two cars um, because I I have not had a car for a while and it was time for me to get a car and then um, Tracy needed a new car because her car is old old and higher mileage so but yeah should have bought a Mac a Mac. Yeah. I would have bought a Mac if I could buy a Mac. Because then not only do you have transportation, but you have a you know, complex fighting device mm-hmm. in the event that you must destroy your enemies That's or true. keep the peace. Um, I wish I wish I could buy a Mac like a Titanfall Mac. You know Titanfall Macs? Because they're pretty fucking cool. Mm-hmm. They can like, jump and they have like, jetpacks and shit. And, like all kinds of weapons. Jetpacks and shit. And shit. Damn. They're pre-programmed with a pooping cycle. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> It's just so, it's just like real life. Just like just yeah. like real Max. Yeah. <laughs> like like Max in nature. <laughs> Max in the wild. I'm Feral about, Max. I've been thinking of, yeah, I've been thinking have, have you thought about that? How cool would a setting be where it's after Max mm-hmm. as technology existed and they like developed AI and went off on their own and developed little mech sort of civilizations that degenerated until they become feral mechs and humanity is just like so it's in a only... struggle against the wilderness of, of feral mechs. So it's so far future that not only has human civilization collapsed due to the singularity, <laughs> yeah. but mech civilization itself has then collapsed such that the mech society has been reduced to like feral yes um like tribal cultures i think this is the best idea we've ever had that is a re- <laughs> that like the like the depth of history in that setting sounds bizarre it sounds awesome that sounds great Oop, this way. somebody take that to the bank yeah <laughs> somebody cash in on our ip that sounds so cool like can you imagine i can't oh uh, it's maybe, the best uh, maybe they're like oh it's so many histories like well, you could delve into the ruins of the ancient civil, you know, and like the mechs started developing their own like primitive religion and stuff about like a machine god, and it's just the best. It's, it's... They, well, they have primitive religion, but then you could dive into their actual history, like when like high mech civilization, right? Like because I'm envisioning that mech civilization was around for like you know thousands and thousands of years until it somehow collapsed, and so human civilization is a distant memory, like literally buried beneath the <laughs> the you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like then the collapse of two Romes. Yeah. Double, it's the global double Romes. Romes. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Collapse of all the Romes. Of course, this is all based on like Titanfall type mechs that have their own AI and do stuff on their own. Because I think in most mech fiction, mechs are, are literally just transportation. Like they're just an exosuit. In, in Evangelion? They have souls or something, don't they? Some they're. Some their shit. organic tissue cloned from Adam, one of the first beings that is like mixed with like the DNA of Shinji's mother to make like organic material. And they're not supposed to be conscious, but that's why they put them in the plugs in into the like so the mech armor is essentially just armor and an organic creature. <laughs> um, and like they like 
it's like a it's like a cyborg intercorporation where they like doubly penetrate each other and like become a single entity. Goodness. Like there's some of the most significant scenes of in, in the mech combat is when they're like the mech is out of power mm-hmm. and it man like it should be dead like or you know like power wise, but it it like comes like it it acts on its own like mm. I don't know. It's really weird. That does that does sound like the kind of thing that anime would love is the ability for its characters to just come back and do one last thing because it happens all the time in Dragon Ball well it's like it's like it's more like the process of their general like awakening of uh, like it, it, it's like the weird cyborg consciousness like Shinji mixing with the soul of the Ava like it's, it's a cyborg thing all cyborgs all the time all cyborgs all the time have you seen Ghost in the Shell? I've seen some of the show. Oh, I've never seen the show. I just seen the original movie. Oh no, I definitely not seen the movie. I liked um, standalone complex. That was the thing that I liked when I was young. I don't know anything about those really because I don't. I, I wonder because is it is that supposed to also be Major Kasuragi? I think so. I think the characters don't really change. Because, but it's. I mean, like if you saw Ghost in the Shell, like it doesn't end in a way that would make any sense for it to have a continuing storyline. <laughs> it's never stopped anime before. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I have a real thing for like '80s anime. Like I know it's '90s, but like '80s and '90s like OAV style or like films. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recently found some lists of stuff like that. So what does OAV mean? Original animation video or original video animation? It's as opposed to like a television series. Like it essentially was designed. Like it's like a mini series that would probably be designed to be released on hmm. video or something. Okay. Usually. Because a lot of the other stuff, like, Evangelion was a live broadcast television show. Like, that's why it's, like, 26 episodes. It's, like, a season of TV. Okay. A lot of anime is like that. But OVAs were, like... Like, uh, actually, Macross Plus sitting over there is an OVA. Because it's, it's like, six episodes. Like, FLCL is a good example, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I love Fulikuli. <laughs> we saw the pillows live. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, you're the one that got me into the pillows, I think. Pillows and then, were great. We and have... then I like watched <laughs> Fully Cooly later. I, my friends and I were like obsessed with the pillows. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. We saw them. We were, it was a very exciting moment in her. Yeah, I can only imagine. Like, that'd be really, that'd be a really awesome experience as a kid into anime and <sighs> stuff. Well, we were like more into the pillows than we were into like anything else. Like it was just like listening to like their whole <laughs> like catalog. I don't really care for them that much anymore. I liked them I a lot more when I was in really high long school. Time, yeah. No. I mean, I think I still probably liked them, but I haven't them in a really long time. Hmm. But this is like, yeah, I don't know. When we were like, collecting their stuff, it was pretty like quality file sharing. It wasn't yeah. easy to just like pull down an album or something. Yeah. <sighs> Those pillow pillow days, healthy on days, house of pillow <laughs> pillow on days, house of pillow on days, house of pillows. <sighs> this, this Look at dungeon. us here in the Tower of Filth. It's in the Tower of Filth. Whoa, that's my, that's the Tower of Filth. <laughs> tower of Filth sounds. Isn't there a band with filth in the name? Cradle of Filth. That's the one. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Not, not a big, I knew. I knew a big fan. I, I mean, I, I've never listened to it. I was just trying to place the name. Tower of Filth sounds like it. It doesn't sound like a good band name. I don't know what a cradle of filth exactly would be. Like a puddle. <laughs> I just imagine like a bassinet, but it's just gross. <laughs> it's just like mm. <laughs> just literally a dirty cradle. <laughs> yeah, it's just a dirty mess. <laughs> oh. oh. This poor baby. <laughs> There's no baby in it. It's just a baby in the cradle of filth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would that would be of... truly troubling. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like a it's a lonely cradle. Abandoned. So sad. That is very sad. Right? Now hear harpsichords behind it. I feel like that's a thing that they did at the very beginning of Dying Light was that um, you go onto this floor of some building and like you see blood on the walls and stuff, and then there's a like stroller right in front of you. Mm. And for some reason, like the game is in control of your first person view camera, and for some reason, like your character walks up to the and like looks in like they're like afraid something's gonna be in there but there's nothing in there and you also have like not really encountered that much zombies yet and definitely no zombie children so I don't really understand it's weird like they just sort of like forced it as a weird scary moment like basically playing on the expectation of the player that there will be a weird zombie baby or something in there (laughs) it's a very strange moment for that game speaking of zombie babies wait speaking of zombie babies hold that thought okay 
Speaking of zombie babies. Oh yeah, um, I just wanted to echo a point that Joko had made about Zombie 3. Because, um, A, I have seen Zombie 3. B, I love Zombie 3. <laughs> and C, in Zombie 3, there is a scene where there's a floating zombie head that comes out of a refrigerator to bite, and bite ya. It just bites ya. Wait, it's just floating around? It like flies out of a, they open a fridge and it's like a jump scare. They're like, ah, oh, it's like a zombie head and it's like it comes out and gets ya. It's ridiculous. That zombie 3 is ridiculous. hot schlock. <laughs> Oh, you like you like like there's zombie two. Well, allow me to explain. <laughs> Please. Um, Dawn of the Dead. You may have heard of this film. I've heard of it. Uh, the original. Uh, it was actually, I believe, it received funding partially as re- as a result of Dario Argento, Italian horror maestro, funding it. But as a result of him fund or as as part of the agreement for him funding it, he um, secured the rights to recut the film and distribute it internationally. So in Italy and Europe, he distributed it as zombie. So, uh, uh, like, Lucio Fulci, who in the past was known for his, you know, giallo, like one on top of the other slash perversion story. Right. Um, a little bit classier film, in spite its name. This is really cool looking. It's gotten darker. Oh, uh, I movies. Um, he released Zombie 2, which it, w- it was not really a proper sequel in any sense. It was just a, you know, like a cash-in sequel, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, but it was, but it kind of created a semi-series, and, like, Zombie 2 is, like, a really good, creepy, eerie zombie movie, like, com- lacks, like, the social commentary aspect of Dawn of the Dead, but it's, like, it's, it's, it's an infamous gore movie, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, like, for the time, but Zombie 3, like, Fulci, like, dropped out, like, of directing it, like, I think not very long into it, and it was taken over, I, I think it was Bruno Mattei, or Claudio Fergasso, it doesn't really matter, they're both horrible, um, <laughs> But, like, in a good way. Okay. No, I think it's Bruno Mattei. Has to, hold on. I have to clarify that, because one of them is better than the other. Because <laughs> one of them made Zombie 4, and Zombie 4 is truly execrable. Holy. Oh, except the guy who... The, the lead actor. Oh, yeah, it was Bruno Mattei. <laughs> who is an even, like... He's more of a schlockmeister than any of the others. Hmm. Oh. This place is a, an actual maze. Uh. Yay! So. While you're wandering the maze, would you like to hear some of uh, Bruno Mattei's uh, directorial credits? Oh, please. Emmanuel's Revenge. You may know Emmanuel as a name, of, like a name that's repeated in a series of porn films. SS Girls, Women's Camp 119, Emmanuel's Erotic Nights, Emmanuel and the Porno Nights, Sexy Night Report, The True Story of the Nun of Morza, <laughs> Porno Holocaust. Porno Holocaust. Yes. That's Violence fantastic. in a Women's Prison, Women's Prison Massacre, um, and then his zombie movie, Hell of the Living Dead, which I do own but have not seen yet. Hell of the Living Dead? Hell of the Living Dead. I think that one's pretty dope. Uh, AKA Night of the Zombies, AKA Zombie Creeping Flesh. <laughs> and then this movie called Rats, Nights of Terror, which is like a post-apocalypse movie. But Zombie 3 is just terrible. It's like uh, it's like a late Philippines movie, like, because it was cheap to film there. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, it bears almost no resemblance to the quality of a full film. But somehow, a zombie, like, it, it, but it's like, enjo- I don't know, it's enjoyable in a, in a, in a completely its own way. Like, in a genuine way. Mm-hmm. Um, man. That's the one where Chrissy and I always repeat when the scientists, the whole premise of that movie is the scientists are developing this, like, drug called Death One. It's a good name for a drug. <laughs> All that, it's better. Um, and... Somehow, they end up burning these corpses that were infected with it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, without thinking about it. And yeah. it, it goes into the air, like, right. it, like, it, like, like it does. And then it starts turning everybody on the island into zombies. But there's this scene where the scientist, like the military, is like talking to him about it. And he's like, if I had known what the purpose of Death One was, I never would have worked on this project. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Despite the fact that it's called Death One, <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah, you couldn't have guessed. At look at all. this poster; it's great. Everybody sees oh, Zombie Three. <laughs> don't don't. It was written by Claudio Fregasso, but oh my lord, Zombie Four is even worse. I didn't even really. Oh, but Zombie Four has the best opening credits th- song. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. What is it? Oh, it's oh no 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 I don't know it's I, I gotta find it again. Don't don't play it. I'm not gonna play it. Okay. I just uh I, if they can link it to you to share with you know our friends. Interestingly enough, Zombie is one of those franchises that 
because of the marketing aspect, like tons of other movies were um, given the zombie title, mm-hmm. even though they had no real resemblance. Like Zombie Four and Zombie Five don't have any real resemblance. Um, they're not actually part of a series of films, but there's like there's like 15 different movies that have each gotten like some. There's like probably three or four different Zombie Threes. Like that's not their original titles, but like they they were at least distributed somewhere with that title. It's strange. Yeah, it's really weird. I'm fascinated by that. The Demons series is like that too, which I have the whole thing queued up for my October. Hooptober. Hoop Toby. <laughs> Hoop Toby. I'm really excited about that, by the way. Toby it is. It's like late Italian weirdness. Like late eighties, early nineties. You, you saw Demons. We we watched it for movie. Oh yeah, Demoni. Yeah, that's right. Demons. We, Demons. Yeah. <laughs> There was there was something else with that movie. Was that the one where they were like in the theater the whole time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that Who, whoever watches it becomes a demon, <laughs> <laughs> or however he said that. I'm just driving a motorcycle around inside a movie theater. Fast as a shark, he's a killer. Rip like, out your heart. A helicopter. <laughs> yeah, it falls through the roof. <laughs> yeah. It's like a weird nightmare that you had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to explore this floor because I think there's just nothing in it. I think it's just a dumb maze. We'll go up the next floor. Okay. The zombie series includes such diverse films as, Ryan, hold on, got this for you, mm-hmm. it includes Bracula. <laughs> that, that sounds like a great <laughs> Space Ghost bit. <laughs> A.K.A. Terror of the Living Dead. A virgin, Bracula. A virgin among the living dead. Hmm. Um, the Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, slash <laughs> The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. The first name is my favorite. I like that Sleeping Corpses Light too. That's one of my favorites, actually, from that period. Oh, and I've, I've, I've talked about the Blind Dead movies, but I can't talk about them enough. I love them so much. Ah, I talked about the Shockwaves, the best of the Nazi zombie movies. Shockwaves? I think we talked about that. Oh, I know yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah, Nazi yeah, yeah. zombie movies before. Yeah. But I think it's extremely passionate. That's one you definitely have on ah, display. I just love Shockwaves, yeah. Ah, most people don't like Shockwaves. But you have to... You Doesn't have... that one also have, like, Nazis in it? Or is that a different... No, it's a Nazi zombie movie. Oh, it is, oh wait, yeah, yeah. that's what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to play a game and... No, I understand, listen. I understand. I'm just blabbing about what's it, you know. God it's also got John Carradine and Peter Cushing. I promise I'm listening. And Brooke Adams from just, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I should shut up, because I, yeah, I just talk about them. It's okay, what are you talking it's about? okay. I, I'm just, I I'm trying know. to, I'm like three seconds behind everything that's happening. I'm just gerbil gerbling about fun. <sighs> just me, I don't know. David Carradine... He's cool, right? John Carradine. Well, you know, John Carradine's also cool, <laughs> I'm sure. He's a... Yeah. <laughs> David Carradine's probably cooler, let's be honest. No, that's not true at all. Is John Carradine still alive? No, I don't know. Are they related? Yes. John okay. Carradine, I believe, is his father. Okay. John Carradine is great, He, but he's been around in films since, like, the 30s. Or, like, he was. Like, he had a career spanning, like, the 30s to the... I was yeah. reading some crazy shit today about about uh, film sets mm. in the like twenties, thirties, forties. Yeah. Which um, yes. when they sh- filmed like shootouts and stuff, mm-hmm. they didn't have blanks yet, so they just fired live ammunition into the area around the the people that they were shooting at, which Seriously? seems like the most insanely fucking dangerous thing of all time. That's that is commitment. Um. And also, I was reading another thing about um, John Larroquette, who's famous from his role on Night Court. Mm-hmm. Um, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's, like a, it, it's a stage for performing. Let's sing for, a song. For the D-Generals. Um, John Larroquette, he was um, in this movie where there was a huge accident in production mm. that I think hurt some people or killed somebody or somebody. Is that the Twilight Zone movie? It was like a, a helicopter problem. That's the Twilight movie. Is it? I think so. And he was... His car got stolen that morning, and Whoa. so he was late to the shooting, and if it weren't for that, he'd probably be dead from that Whoa, accident. Yeah, really? Yeah. I think you... Well, I know that... Yeah, that's why that's a movie. That was the one that was a famous, famous tragedy. Mm-hmm. On the set. Yeah. Yeah, that is so messed up. Yeah. It was a crazy, crazy thing. And I was also... I watched like a video at work about um, bloopers and movies that ended up in the final cut. Yeah. Like, um, you know that scene in, I think it's Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the fly flies into the bad guy's mouth, and he just, like, eats it? <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a weird cut of that. That was an, a blooper, and normally when, you know, flies fly on your face when you're shooting, you just cut and 
go again. Yeah, yeah. But he just, you know, kept a straight face while it was happening. And so what they did was they edited out the fly escaping his mouth, and so it just looks like he eats the the fly (laughs) in that movie. I think it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's one of the Indiana Jones movies. That's great. I don't remember which one it's in. But... Man. That's a cool one. Yeah, the thing about Twilight Zone is so sad. It was Vic Morrow who died. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, John Larroquette, his car was stolen that morning, and he spent hours trying to find it and that's why he was late to the shoot and that's why he's alive <laughs> that's really good yeah sadly the only film that i know, know vic morrow from is 1990 bronx warriors the second actually the second to last film he made before twilight zone which is an italian <laughs> wikipedia says action science fiction film <laughs> that i think they might be slightly overstating <laughs> But it actually has a really cool cast because it has Vic Morrow and it has Fred uh, Fred Williamson. Is that his name? Uh, yeah, Fred Williamson. That's Who you would nice. recognize? Hmm. That guy. Oh, sort of. He's in like tons of stuff, like genre movies. Yeah. Uh it's great. That's the one with the guy. Who, I don't know. He, he, he kind of weirdly walks like he kind of has a stick stick up him, and like he, but he just like. Oh. Oh, the Olga. Look, he's okay. a, you want to talk to one the of Olga. those. Yeah. One of those. But, no, but it, 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 you have to. It's, it's, must be seen. Oh, it's like a weird uh, warrior strip off. Okay. But it's it's quite a toy one. And the crystal, crystal armor. The crystal armor. I don't think I even need that. Maybe you don't need it. Because, like, you already have crystal, and the other person has Genji, yeah. Maybe to truly win the game, you have to divest yourself of your possessions. That's the thing in uh, Resident Evil. Is it? In which one? In Resident Evil 1. There's a part where you have to have nothing in your inventory, I believe, to survive a, a walk across a thing or something. Mm. Or no, it's at the very end of the game. You have to put all your stuff in a thing to make it through an elevator because the elevator has a weight limit. That's the thing. Oh, I don't remember that. It's been a long time since I played Resident Evil 1, though. Or maybe that... Oh, you know what? Fuck me, I'm thinking of Seinfeld too. Oh. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm an idiot. Oh, they didn't say basic. Yeah. A, I'm pretty sure it's Silent Hill too. It, there's definitely. I don't remember that either. Fuck but... me. There's a Silent Hill game for sure that has an <laughs> elevator, and you have to take all your shit and put it in a box. <laughs> I don't remember I this. Promise. I believe you. It's a thing in some Silent Hill game. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I hate when that happens though. I can't remember. So I'm gonna Google Silent Hill. Put your things in a box. <laughs> We're gonna find out that's actually like a quote from some piece of dialogue and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I feel like it's in um, the hotel at the end of Silent Hill 2. Oh. Okay. As, uh, so unsurprisingly, that. Uh... Oh, look, it's Thor. Two of them. Oh. Two <laughs> Thors. Thor looks like a lizard and does not have his, you know, his hammer. <laughs> signature hammer. His that thing that he has. Mjolnir. I think that may just be a lizard man, Ryan. Oh, okay. I think his lizard mother named him. Are you Thor. sure you're not seeing things that you wish to see? What's you, that? you wish to see a lizard man, and so you see a lizard man? Well, when I think Thor. At, you know how <laughs> when I, think I, Thor. I set the variable already? Um, you know, Thor equals lizard man. It's just <laughs> preset in the, in the code up at the top, so now whenever it calls it, it, mm-hmm. just, it just loads. Lizard Man. Lizard so Lizard I, Man. I'm seeing Lizard Man. You you're probably seeing game. Thor. Yeah. Yeah. I hacked my brain. Oh. Yeah, on a mimetic level. I, I love the sprite because one of his hands is a hand and then the other hand is a snake. It's a totally snake mouth. Totally snake mouth. Yeah, totally yeah. snake mouth. That's my. That's my. He's got a bad favorite. case of the snake mouth. Totally snake mouth. Look at all these treasure chests. Crystal hand. I don't need crystal hand. Maybe. You, it's like maybe the, you do. Wait, what? Is it game for us? Oh. Okay. Weird. Uh, You're just taking a dip real quick. What the f- I guess if you say so. What is it even supposed to- I don't- Hmm. Hmm. This dungeon. You know how you can't get your, um, bishop's clothes dry? You have to get them wet in order to open boxes? Oh, that's a <laughs> yeah. fundamental one of the captures. Just... <laughs> it's a truth in life. <laughs> yep. Part of, it's part of Catholicism. Maybe we needed these sages so we could walk through the water? <laughs> yeah, otherwise you would have well, sunk. Yeah. It's just, you know, can't walk on water yet, 
It's more just like a, you don't, you're kind of like halfway. <laughs> you know? But you don't have to try to just block, so. That way Jesus is still the fastest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus can sprint on the water. <laughs> it's, it's, you can do cartwheels it's across It's the, the celestial water. hierarchy of water walking. <laughs> Bishops, yeah. You know, like the Pope, he, he's just his ankles underwater. It's like an inverse of how far buried in the ice you are in Hell and Dante, like depending on your sins. Like, right. But it's like, holiness, you're like out of the water. Mm -hmm. You know, the water is zero. The water is completely zero. above it. Satan, not, ignore for the fact that Satan isn't completely submerged in the ice, breaks up my whole metaphor. <laughs> but you know, maybe Satan's an exception to the rule here. Satan's beneath the ice. <laughs> he's just so far into it. Yeah, I think Through to the other above side. Above the ice, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you know, hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, here we are. Well, here we are. <laughs> In the snow castle. It's an asshole. Thank you.